What's up guys, it's been a while since my last Children of Bodom review, but I'm back. Uh, this is, I believe, part 8. And we'll be looking at the fifth studio album, which would be Are You Dead Yet? Our lineup remains the same, except uh, we have a new rhythm guitarist taking over for Alexander, who left the band in 2003. Uh, we have Rupe Ladvala from the Finnish band Stone. He's a really good guitarist. Uh, all lyrics and songwriting on this album are done by Alexi, as usual, but we have some exceptions. Uh, Kimberly Goss from Synergy contributed lyrics for the track Bastards of Bodom and additional lyrics for Next in Line. And Rupe Latvala contributed some songwriting credit for Bastards of Bodom. Uh, the whole album is in drop C with the exception of the track Next in Line which is in D standard. There's more focus on slower tempos and chuggy riffs on this album. It's still melodic, but the keyboards are toned down quite a bit, which is a big disappointment, considering that they are a big part of the band's appeal. Uh, let's get right into the tracks. Uh, we have Living Deadbeat. There couldn't have been a better opening to the album than this. It starts off with a very cool synth sound, followed by a great keyboard melody. Before you know it, the guitars kick in and we get some very good riffs. The verses get the job done and I really dig Alexi's vocals. The pre-chorus has an epic build-up and the chorus itself is very anthemic and catchy. It's probably one of my favorite Bonum choruses. The bridge contains a classic guitar and keyboard unison melody and both the guitar and keyboard solos are great. The song ends in an unusual way with nearly 30 seconds of guitar feedback which fades seamlessly into the next track. Many years ago this was actually my favorite Bodum song of all time. While my tastes have changed, this is still a very good track. I give it a 4 out of 5. Uh, second track would be the title track, Are You Dead Yet? Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of this song. It's actually one of my least favorite Bodum songs. Which is kind of odd because a lot of people seem to like this one, but I don't know. It starts off with a memorable guitar riff and nice drums before the double bass and one of Alexi's trademark screams come in. The verses are very simplistic and uninteresting in structure and don't really do that much at all for me. The pre-chorus is also quite bland. The chorus has a riff that seems very inspired by the song Implosion of Heaven from the band's 1994 demo of the same name. That was back when they were known as In Earth. Anyways, the vocals in the chorus are very catchy and it definitely shows that they were trying to make an accessible song. The solo is one of Alexi's weakest in my opinion and the song ends kind of abruptly. Overall, this is a slightly above mediocre track and probably my second least favorite Bodum song of all time. The first coming very shortly. I give this one a 3 out of 5. Uh, the third track is called If You Want Peace, Prepare for War. The first thing I can say is what a relief after the previous track. The intro contains what is easily one of Alexi's fastest riffs and it is brutal as hell. In fact, the whole song is. The next part has a nice little bass interlude before going right into the verse which has another heavy riff. I love Alexi's guitar techniques during the verses, they sound awesome and give the song some personality. Shortly after there's a nice guitar and keyboard unison melody, perhaps the only melodic part in the whole song, and then we get right back into the madness. The chorus is incredible to say the least with a nice power chord riff and some fast fills. I really love the gang vocals in the chorus as well. Also, there's not one, not two, but three guitar solos along with a keyboard solo. One of the solos, I can't remember which one, is done by Rupe Latvala who proves that he does not fuck around. The song ends perfectly with the words, if you want peace, prepare for war. One other thing to note is that this song has never been played live and it's kind of easy to see why due to its difficulty. This is definitely one of the best on the album, I give it a 5 out of 5. After If You Want Peace Prepare For War, we have quite a bit of momentum going into the next song. Unfortunately, it's all wasted. The next track is called Punch Me I Bleed. It's a slower ballad song off the album and in my opinion the worst Bodum song ever made, not including cover songs. It starts off with a very dark and dreary sounding riff that doesn't really leave any impression on me whatsoever. The verse consists of a very generic and chuggy riff that once again is uninteresting. The pre-chorus has a nice keyboard part, but everything else going on during this ruins the atmosphere. 
The chorus is by far the worst part of the song and the worst chorus in the history of the fucking band. It sounds like something out of an Asking Alexandria or crappy emo song. There isn't a keyboard solo, probably because Yanni refused to contribute anything to this crap, but there is a guitar solo which is actually pretty decent and pretty much the only reason that I would listen to this again. It pains me to speak this way about my favorite band, but I am not a hardcore fanboy and I can definitely see the flaws. Uh, I give this one a 2.5 out of 5. It's very mediocre, uh, borderline terrible, I do not recommend it. Uh, next track is called In Your Face. It's one of the two singles from the album. It starts off as a very generic but at the same time kind of catchy chug riff. Soon the keyboards come in and play a fantastic melody. The verses are quite chuggy but easy to headbang along to. My only complaint is Alexi's lyrics, especially the excruciating lines, Oh my god you're so fine, and of course I don't give a flying fuck motherfucker. The chorus is strong and very catchy, however, which saves the song quite a bit. The guitar solo is pretty solid, as is the keyboard solo, and when it's all said and done, this is a solid track. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, now the next track, uh, Next in Line. By far the most underrated Bowdoin song ever made. I initially disliked it, but it grew on me, and it is now one of my favorite Bowdoin songs of all time. And no, I'm not even joking. Like I said earlier, it's the only song on the album in D standard. The intro has a nice groovy riff with nice accented keyboards, and the following riff is pretty catchy once you understand it. The verses are easily the weakest point of the song, being fairly simple, but they contain some nice harmonics and other techniques. The pre-chorus is also pretty straightforward, and the chorus itself is awesome, being very catchy. The little bridge after the chorus has some nice guitar effects and a great heavy as hell riff. After the second chorus and during the second bridge, we are treated to what is in my opinion Alexi's greatest scream of all time. You just have to hear it to see what I mean. If that wasn't good enough, we get to the keyboard and guitar solos. The keyboard solo is excellent, but the guitar solo is mind blowing. It is by far my favorite Alexi Leho guitar solo of all time. He uses so many great techniques in the mere 20 second solo and makes it sound insane. The rhythm guitar and drums during all of this is also stellar. This one also has never been played live which is very unfortunate. Overall it's tied for best on the album and easily up there with my favorite Bonham songs of all time. I'd give it a 5 out of 5. The next song is called Bastards of Bodum. It's the Bodum song obviously. It's also, in my opinion, the weakest Bodum titled song, but that isn't saying much since I like all of them, including Lobotomy. The song kicks off with a sweet bass riff, and when the guitars kick in, there's a great keyboard line. The melody afterwards is excellent and is reminiscent of Needle 24-7. The verses are straightforward, and the chorus features more of Alexi's singing vocals. The bridge features a nice riff, and there's a guitar solo at the end of the song, which is pretty great. This song overall it kind of feels like filler, but there's some great things about it. I give it a 4 out of 5. Uh, the next track is the other single off the album, and tied with Next in Line is my favorite song on the album. That would be Trashed, Lost, and Strung Out. The intro has a nice build up, and we are soon treated to a classic Boda melody. The verses have a nice groove and lots of variety, such as the second verse when the keyboards come in. There's a brief keyboard solo shortly after which is fantastic as usual, and the chorus is one of those catchy sing-along ones. The bridge contains a variation of the intro melody, and the guitar solo is frantic and one of the best on the album. Uh, I can't really say anything else about this song, it's just, it's great, it's a 5 out of 5 for sure. Uh, the final track off the album is also the shortest, that would be We're Not Gonna Fall. The intro has a great mid-tempo riff, and the verses have great vocals and drumming. The chorus is very powerful and almost like a sequel to the closing track on the previous album, that being Hate Crew Death Roll. After the first chorus, there is an awesome melody with a great rhythm guitar part. The highlight of the song would most definitely be the guitar and keyboard duel at the end, which brings back good memories of Kissing the Shadows. 
The song ends with a different take on the chorus, which is a great touch. Uh, this is one of the strongest tracks on the album. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Uh, that's it for all the tracks on the album, but we're not done yet. I'm going to be talking about Knuckle Duster, which was a song released on the Trash Lost and Strung Out EP, which was released a year prior to this album. Apparently they couldn't find a place for it on the album, so they didn't include it, but I call bullshit on that, because the album's only nine tracks long, and they could have easily put it somewhere. Okay, so Knuckle Duster. It starts off with a simple but heavy riff that takes us to the main melody of the song, which is great. The verses are simplistic, but evoke a lot of anger. The chorus sounds almost nothing like a Bodum song, which makes this track stand out from the rest. It is still melodic, but there's just something about it that's different. There's also two guitar solos, the first done by Alexi, which is solid. The second one done by Rupe is incredible. Rupe should definitely be allowed to play more solos in the future. This is a solid track overall, and I would definitely pick it over Are You Dead Yet, Punch Me I Bleed, and In Your Face. Overall, Are You Dead Yet is possibly my least favorite Bodum album in overall quality. The album does, however, contain some of my favorite Bodum songs of all time. My top three would be Next in Line, Trash Lost and Strung Out, and If You Want Peace, Prepare for War. I highly recommend those, along with Living Deadbeat and We're Not Gonna Fall. Well that's it for this review, next time we will take a look at what is considered to be the worst Bodum album, that being 2008's Blood Drunk. See you next time.